Silk is a captivating novella by Italian author Alessandro Baricco, which was translated into English by Guido Waldman in 1997 and later by Anne Goldstein in 2006. The story is set in the 19th century and revolves around Hervé Jonker, a French merchant who becomes enamored with the wife or concubine of a Japanese nobleman. In 2007, the novella was adapted into a film of the same title starring Kara Knightley. The narrative begins with the devastation caused by a silkworm disease that wipes out the species across Europe and North Africa. Hervé's town relies heavily on the silk trade, and the local magnate, Balbadiou, who owns the town's silk mills, sends Hervé on a perilous journey to Japan to procure silkworm eggs. However Japan is nearly closed off to foreigners, and exporting silkworms is strictly forbidden by Japanese law. Moreover, the arduous journey to Japan takes several months, spanning the entire expanse of Europe, and Asia. Hervé's beloved wife, Helene, is hesitant to see him depart for such a long time, but they both understand that the survival of their community hinges on attaining the silkworm eggs. The successful acquisition of the eggs would also bring wealth to Hervé. Eventually, Hervé reaches Japan by sailing from the Siberian coast aboard a smuggler's ship. He continues his journey on foot, evading main roads, until he reaches a designated meeting point. There, blindfolded, he is taken to a small village where he is granted an audience with a local aristocrat named Harake, who agrees to sell him the coveted silkworm eggs. During the audience, Hervé becomes captivated by a woman in Harake's entourage, someone who does not possess the typical Oriental eyes. The woman notices Hervé's attention, and through unspoken glances and gestures, an intense passion ignites between a French merchant and a mysterious woman. However, Hervé is unable to see her directly, as being caught attempting to do so would result in a death sentence. Filled with longing for the enigmatic woman, Hervé returns to France. Balbadiou generously rewards him for his successful acquisition of the silkworm eggs, allowing Hervé to purchase the house of his and Helene's dreams. The love between Hervé and Helene gradually transforms into a domestic affection, lacking the alluring and forbidden romance of his affair in Japan. When Balbadiou requires more silkworm eggs the following year, Hervé eagerly agrees to return to Japan. Harake, the Japanese nobleman, befriends Hervé and proudly shows him his collection of exotic birds. In the midst of their interactions, Hervé seizes an opportunity to hide one of his gloves among some clothes, hoping his beloved will discover it. In response, she sends him a note written in Japanese. Filled with curiosity, Hervé returns home longing to unravel the contents of the note. He manages to find a brothel and lion run by a Japanese woman known as Madame Blanche. She reveals that the note reads, Come back or I shall die. Madame Blanche warns Hervé against pursuing the author of the note. Meanwhile, Hervé and Helene embark on a holiday to the Riviera, hoping to reignite the passion in their relationship and conceive a child. However, their attempts are unsuccessful. As the time approaches for Hervé to embark on another journey to Japan, Helene is heartbroken. She knows that with each trip, Hervé grows further distant from her. During Hervé's stay with Harake, his beloved secretly releases the birds from the aviary, angering Harake. In her place, she sends a servant girl to Hervé, with whom he shares a night of intimacy. When the time comes for the transaction of the silkworms, Harake does not personally appear, but instead sends an intermediary. As Hervé departs, Harake does not bid him farewell. Oh, and his return to France this time, Hervé is overcome with sorrow, yearning to be reunited with his beloved in Japan. However, he discovers that a civil war has erupted in Japan, and when the moment arrives to collect more silkworm eggs, Balbadiou proposes sending Hervé to China instead. Refusing this alternative, Hervé insists on going to Japan. Upon his arrival, he finds Harake's residence in the entire village abandoned. While wandering, a young boy approaches Hervé and presents him with the glove he had left for his beloved. The young boy guides Hervé to a campsite where Harake and his village reside. However, Harake refuses to grant Hervé entry into the camp. Undeterred, Hervé adamantly remains, unwilling to leave. The following morning, Harake orders the execution of the boy for leading Hervé to the camp. Despite the tragic event, Hervé manages to obtain silkworm eggs in another Japanese town. However, the journey has taken too long, and the eggs hatch and perish before reaching France. This unfortunate outcome leaves the mills in Hervé's town without any material to process. The community suffers immense hardships, but Hervé is consumed by his thoughts of his beloved in Japan, barely registering the struggles around him. One day, Hervé receives a letter written in Japanese, stirring excitement within him. He rushes to Madame Blanche, seeking her translation skills. 
the letter reveals a powerful and erotic declaration of love, bidding farewell and wishing Hervé a happy life. Madame Blanche presents Hervé with some blue flowers that she adorns in her clothing. Despite this touching gesture, Hervé continues to pine for his lost love. He withdraws from his business and devotes his time to creating a park with an aviary modeled after Harakay's. He perceives it as a monument to his unattainable love, symbolizing the yearning for something forever out of reach. Tragically, Helene, still in her 30s, falls ill and succumbs to a fever. Despite his ongoing obsession with his Japanese beloved, Hervé mourns his wife deeply. One day, he notices blue flowers left on Helene's grave. Intrigued by the connection, he visits Madame Blanche to inquire about her relationship with his wife. To his astonishment, Madame Blanche reveals that Helene herself was the author of the passionate love letter. Aware of Hervé's infatuation with a Japanese woman, Helene sought to alleviate his pain. Madame Blanche discloses that Helene had longed to be the woman Hervé truly loved. In a moment of realization, Hervé understands that his true love had been Helene all along. He has the word Hellas, alas, engraved on her gravestone, symbolizing his remorse. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.